Shit. We are back up. Uh, this is not part of the story stream. We have finished the story finally, but now we are back with the boys. Uh, Sam, introduce yourself, please and thank you. Hello, my name is Sam Kanfush, and today we're going to be talking about Spider-Man 2, the game. And then we have the motherfucking Clarkster. My name is Ryan Clark. We're going to be talking about Spider-Man 2, the game. Thanks. I really, really that, appreciate is that. that. Is that what we yeah, wanted yeah, to do? Yeah, that's, that's what I wanted. Thanks. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, so in the stream, um, I'm just going to kind of be bullshitting around on the game, but we're going to break it down to a few sections. Number one being the story. Number two being the game mechanics. Number three being the cosmetic suits, face design. Uh, and number <laughs> four being what three things that the game improved on, what it really fucking sucked at, and then predictions for future DLC and content, and then a final recap in comparison of one to two. So uh, I was going to start on section one, the story, but I'll hand that off to Sam. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on the, story the story of Spider-Man 2. All right. Well, uh, I think the story of Spider-Man 2 definitely tackled a much darker story through the tale of the symbiote and Craven the Hunter. Uh, throughout the story, there were obvious nods to the Ultimate Spider-Man symbiote issues, uh, the Web of Shadows game, along with one of the greatest stories ever told in Spider-Man's history, Craven's Last Hunt. Uh, while it is an incredible follow-up to Spider-Man 2018 and uh, the Miles Morales game, I found that the game tried to tell too much all at once. With the addition of Miles and his story with Mr. Negative, his mom, Genki, and Haley, it tended to drag on sometimes. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with the addition of Miles as a playable character next to Peter. I thought it spiced it up, like the gameplay, and it allowed for some awesome moments, but when the game is trying to tell essentially five stories all at once, it gets a little crowded and a little convoluted. And not to bring up the first game this early in the review, but I found that Spider-Man 1 really fleshed out its villains, like Doc Ock and Mr. Negative, making the final battle with both villains much more emotional and epic. With the Venom and Kraven stories, I didn't really think that either could match the intensity that was present in Spider-Man 1. Though Venom and Kraven especially are some of my personal favorite comic villains, I would have liked to see more backstory with Kraven as a character. We were told in like one mission that he's dying of like terminal cancer, and I think that's it. And uh, the Hunter camps on the rooftops provide a little more backstory with Kraven's family, but nothing super groundbreaking. But um, as for Venom, I'm sure you guys and many others feel the pain with the absence of Eddie Brock as Venom. Um, Harry instead takes up the mantle of Venom, though they give us a great portrayal of Harry Osborn and his friendship with Peter and MJ. It was devastating to see that Eddie Brock was absent in the main story, especially when they had such a golden opportunity to bring him in. But, um, though I'm being a bit picky with this story, that doesn't mean I hated it. I actually loved my playthrough and was shocked at some of the surprises the developers threw in there. Being able to play as Venom was baffling, along with his design and the performance by Tony Todd. Craven's entire design, his voice, his charisma. My only complaint is that we didn't get enough time with him, and obviously the black-suited Spider-Man was probably the greatest addition to the game. Yuri Lowenthal did an incredible job with the script, the design of the black suit was impeccable, and just the subtle nods to the 90s animated series, the spectacular Spider-Man show, and obviously Spider-Man 3 were all there. Yuri gave us yet another great portrayal of the black suited Spider-Man, and it was just incredible, but that's about all I gotta say about this story. I was, I was interested in your boys' takes as well. Uh, it'd be a bit hard to follow that, but uh, I'd say I agree. And and I think the main point in all that is, like, it is really good. It's just, it moves really fast, and that being the first and second game. Um, but I think the symbiote was done extremely well. Uh, it's great to see the black suit finally in here, because we were talking earlier about how in the first well, the game they are... The finally did justice. Exactly, at least for a long right, time, right. you know. At least since uh, Spider-Man 3, huh? All right, let's not go there. Uh, okay, okay, okay. But, uh, Clark, your, your thoughts? Well, the story was fantastic. I dug it, but I, I also get what the boys are saying with it uh, being a little bit fast. But I dug it being a little bit fast. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I feel like in the first one, it was mostly like, like, you know, like you had to be kind of detective Spider-Man. Like, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but we're not playing a Batman game, you feel me? I'm not sure that. So I feel like I feel like this one also within the fast pace also explained why it was fast paced. Like everything had an urgency to it. Like you got to get this done because of this. And I kind of uh, yeah. I also to add on to that, I think that it's a little more fast paced in a way because it's like 
the characters that they present to you, like Peter and Miles, like they were already established. So they kind of want to like brush through them pretty quick. You know, they don't really take their time with them because they just expect us to already kind of know their whole story and like what's going on with them. So there's I mean, not really a need to Spider drag Man on too, them. You've had to play the other spider man you know? Yeah, right, right. So. Which I, I think is good, and I think the best thing, too, is uh, I didn't watch it because I just, or at least I don't think I watched it, but they give you a full recap of Spider-Man 1, so even yeah, if you have Yeah, the recap it, was all right, yeah. The recap uh, was pretty sweet. At least yeah. they have that. Mm-hmm. But, no, I think the story is really good. I just, there were a lot of unnecessary things i feel like the whole Haley story was just like okay what are we doing here and then i'm like i'm sorry i'm sorry and then ganky it's just like bro just get the fuck out of this game please and thanks I'm sorry i just yeah. don't need that we can talk to um a little bit about how it's like and i know all three of us are currently replaying the the whole trilogy of games now just because you know we're waiting for that new game plus drop so we're all going to be playing it again but uh, until then, we're playing the first one right now, and my playthrough of the first game is, like, nobody really knows that, like, Peter Parker is Spider-Man, so it's kind of, like, lonely in a way. Like, it's not much talking on the phone with anybody, unless it's, like, MJ or, like, Doc Ock, shit like that, but in this game, it just feels like you're getting calls left and fucking right from, like, Miles' mom, Yankee, fucking MJ, Miles, Harry, it's just, like, Jeez, you know. Now it's like it, it does start to get annoying unless you're getting calls from Mouse's mom, and then it's like. And then it's like, yeah, it's, she's it's kind of And then it's like, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Morales. Uh, yeah, I'll, fi- I'll find your son. Thanks. No, I'm saying in the in the fucking end of that game, she was a baddie. Fuck. Sorry. Yeah, we yeah, we were in bro. chat. We were going off. We were really losing <laughs> the it. Cap. <laughs> cap. Cap. No. Um, so I was just going to ask this uh, anyway, uh, now that I'm thinking about it. So do you boys think the story in Spider-Man 1 or Spider-Man 2 was better? In your opinion, I know we've only played through Spider-Man 2 once, and Spider-Man 1 we've played through multiple times. So, I mean, there's going to be a little bit of bias, but, uh, you know, I'd like to know. Uh, I'll, let Clark, I'll let Clark take it away on this one. Dude, uh, right now for me, I- I'm going to have to say 2. Just for the simple fact of, like, one was pretty dope with, like, the whole Sinister Six and stuff. But, like, that didn't happen to the end, and it kind of got wrapped up too fast. But yeah, then, I, yeah, I agree. But then that's also how I kind of feel about Venom, too, in this they, game. I was going to say, that's exactly what they did with Venom. Yeah, so, yeah. But then it's also the point of, like, like how I said, like, uh, the whole fast pace thing, like, you know? Mm-hmm. I didn't have a problem with all right, we're going to have to go do this, do this, do this, because without it, Harry's going to die. But then, you know, we want to be we want to be bully for a little bit. Oh, right. but, for the fir- but for the first one, dude, it was, like, you know, like I said, you had to be fucking, you had to be like Batman. You had to be a detective the whole time. No, I, I agree. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it's because I've played Spider-Man uh, 1 so many times, but I'd gonna have to go spider-man one and i just think that's because it, and i complained about this being fast paced so i'm kind of you know going off my own word here but i liked how fast paced it was in the first one as far as having all these villains show up at different times to whereas this game i felt like okay you are uh focusing on craven for the first half and then venom for the second half and then maybe some people will show up so i don't know that's just that's just my thought but sam but I don't know. In, in a weird way, it, it's like you said, uh, like you focus on Craven for the first half and Venom for the second half. I don't know, Clark, we just said, like, it seemed like Venom was uh, kind of brief in this game. And um, it feels like Craven was like 75% of the game, which I wasn't mad about, but they put Venom all over the, the like, promo material and everything. And he, it, it felt like only the last three hours of the game is whenever you're tailing Venom, you know? Yeah, and we Literally. were talking, too, that uh, in the trailer, it's a pretty prominent part in the trailer where you're fighting them in the middle of the city, and you just never yeah. do that in the game. Right, right. Which is kind of annoying. Yeah. I mean, I also get where they're coming from, though. Like, you know, they want to sell the game. Yeah, right, and, like, what, you know, Spider-Man character better to put on all your shit than Venom, you know? 
Yeah. In fact, she was like, don't get me wrong, like, the whole trailer with Craven and shit was dope, but, like, I only watched it to see what Venom was going to look like in the... In the yeah, movie. and I was, yeah, I was one of the people that was more into the Craven thing, because we've never seen that before. Well, fact, but, no diss to Craven. Craven's fucking dope. Yeah, but it's like, that's why they also put Venom all over everything, because more people are going to tune in if Venom's in it, you know? Yeah. Well, facts. Well, and dude, like, just to go off what they're doing with Craven, like, the new movie's coming out. Do you think that that Craven's going to be as brutal as this one? Or no, gonna, not a chance. Not a chance. Like how they did the Venom movie. Yeah, that is one thing I got to give to this game is Craven really was Craven, like in this game. Or in and this Venom game, was yeah, Venom. Awesome. Right. But no, I don't know. It, oh, as you were. Oh, sorry. Well, I was just going to say real quick that the. <laughs> good thing about the games is they have so much more freedom as far as what they can do and like in the movies it's they're being told by you know 50,000 different people what they can and can't do so I feel like they just right. won't be able to have one as accurate of a story for Craven in the movies and two as violent because they just haven't been coming out with stuff like that recently yeah that was another great thing about this game too is just the overall just the violence I mean the whole we didn't bring this up in any of our points like the whole venom death or the whole craven death was just so it was awesome insane. Dude. so sick yeah that's why such i wanted to see the entire time you know i was like i can't yeah, wait was, to see somebody great. get their fucking heart ripped out and then it was crazy. yeah right and then, and it, dude, like, they, really, they really didn't shy away from the blood well dude it's also like the writing dude like you know what i mean like how could you be playing as a character that literally doesn't want to kill anybody but then you're like dude i want to fucking rip craven's head off and then they finally yes. let us do it yeah that was great because they do really make the boss fights uh challenge and we'll get into that in the gameplay section the this game is definitely more challenging than the last two and oh the craven boss fight was a very hard one and the fact that they let you fucking dog on him in the venom uh, versus craven fight is just it was great it's sick oh it was really sick well, um, I guess that's a perfect segue then, huh? But, uh, uh, yeah, well, I would like to just say, you know, first, I, 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 I personally, I might need to play the game again, but at the moment, I still think Spider-Man 1, to me, might be the better story. I would agree myself, but, you know, to each, to each their own, obviously. Yeah, right, right. Well, wait, hold on, hold on. I mean, going off on that, I mean, I'm not here to dish your point. I just want to say, I just kind of found a, a comparison, like, in the first game, Peter's heartbroken because he has to take out the dude that he looked up to as a scientist. You know what I mean? Like, that was, like, his hero that wasn't a hero. That wasn't, like, a superhero, you know? But then in this one, he has to take out his best friend. Right, right. And you can definitely see that, like, the whole... It's like a parallel. Like, Doc Ock and Harry are very similar in that sense to where they're personal... Like, people are... They're, they're very personal battles with Peter, and... I think the only thing that draws me back, and though it may seem like a small point, I know we've talked about it, is like making Harry Venom, though it was cool, it's just like Eddie Brock is Venom, you know, and I don't know. Facts, like, don't get me wrong, I'm glad to have Venom in this game, but it's weird that Harry is him. You're right. Yeah, right. That, that's one of the big things for me, but. And the thing is, uh, and we've, I think all of us have talked about before, it's like, it's cool that they have the. Uh, I don't know, wherewithal to do something their own that's not copying uh, another story. But at the same time, it's like, if you're going to bring in somebody as big as that, Eddie is as big as Venom. Like, not physically, yeah. but in that, of importance, at least. E yeah, right. And like, I through the like... comics, it's like, tons of people don the Venom mantle, but Eddie Brock is Venom, you know? I feel like yeah. if they mentioned Eddie in like the first game or something, Eddie Brock definitely would have been Venom. But since he hasn't even been established in this universe, I think they were just like, screw it. Yeah. Which is they, annoying yeah. because, I mean, like, I think both of you brought up earlier, it's like they had a perfect way to, to bring him into the story. And they just they just didn't, which was annoying because they had that whole For section sure. where MJ was like, oh, I think I'm going to lose my job to somebody else. And that could have been easily been him. <laughs> yeah, right. Easy way to bring him in. Well, dude, I was also thinking, like, uh, me and Stan were talking about this. It's whenever you're towards, like, towards the end of the game, and uh, she quits, and he's like, yeah. what's that? And she hangs yeah. up on I was thinking, like, you would see later on in the game that, like, her position was given to Eddie. Yeah, like a replacement, you know? Right, that would have been really sick. And then that yeah. would have led for... But the, they killed the symbiote, so it's yeah. like there's no... 
There's no use yeah. for it. Right. I was just gonna say it would have been a perfect way to bring them back, but I mean, yeah, they literally kill off, kill it off. So I mean, unless, the main, yeah, portion of it. And we'll talk about it later, but unless Carnage is coming back and fucking some shit up, we might not be seeing the symbiote for the rest of this series. I feel like Carnage would be DLC. That's what, yeah, I've been saying. But we'll, and, we're gonna get into that in the whole like content part, you know? Oh yeah. Um, but uh. But next on, I mean. The, the mechanics, which I have a, a little bit to say, but not nearly as much as, like, the story. Um, I feel like... Yeah, same, same. The swinging, and I went from playing Spider-Man 2 to, I think, like, the day after, started playing Spider-Man 1 again. And you could immediately tell the difference between the swinging and 2. It's a lot more smooth. There's a lot more moves to do while you're swinging. It makes it more fun. Uh, and yeah. I also think the fighting... Uh, I guess it's improved a little bit, but there are still a lot of elements in the first game that I prefer... Uh, like the finishers and stuff that I do in the second one. So yeah, like the it's kind animations of a, for the finishers. Yeah, it's kind of a mixed bag in my opinion, but what do you boys think? Um, well, I had like a little, I had a little thing to say. Uh, I think it expanded on the first two games by a ton, though I thought it impossible. Like you said, like I found that the swinging mechanics were improved upon even more this time around. Um, I know Connor isn't a big fan of the uh, the addition of the web wings, but web I found they yeah! provided a whole Dude, lot more for me. One I'm pulling a Vince on screen. Map. But, uh, like you said, combat is also self-explanatory. Though I found the use of the iron spider arms a bit annoying. You guys know how I feel about them. But oh, uh, yeah. them forcing you to use them throughout the first part of the game until the black suit came in was just kind of lame. But... The game, like we said, is definitely harder than the first two, especially with the the infamous parrying mechanic. Oh, but, fuck all that. You know, hashtag, hashtag fuck the parry. You know, I think that's probably the one thing that, like, I'd complain about. It's just, and that's just me being bad, you know? Yeah, but it's also, like, now in this game, too, to go off of that, it's just they give you so much in the way of fighting that it's like i'm not gonna remember you know unless i've been playing yeah, this game for 20 yeah, hours yeah right I'm not gonna remember to do you know fifty thousand different moves at once so i don't know. but clericus what are your what are your thoughts for the gameplay yeah uh, yeah uh dude i like you said dude web swinging is definitely better i'm digging the web wings the only thing i want to say that i probably have a problem with is dead ass probably the uh, the hunters that drive around with the tanks with the miniguns on top. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, we gotta like web them and then destroy them. It seems like every time I try to web them, dude, I'm webbing everybody else, even if I'm aiming. Yeah, like, yeah, you're right. It auto locks on everybody but the car. Yeah, dude, it's like the thing will just light me up. But I mean, like you said, dude, like you do better in different tricks whenever you're swinging, even if you aren't hitting the button. Right. The web wings with with the wind tunnels and the vents in the city definitely help, but I feel like I think they did a comparison like which one's faster and like they're roughly around the same amount of time to get across from each half of the city Right, so I mean like it's just kind of like a preference thing, but it's also I, just like you just I don't know You can just switch like in and out from the web wings to boom now you're swinging to boom now You're running up a wall back the web wing. you know, it's just like it's also just yeah, like a style thing, it just looks cool, you know? I think it's also like how you'd want to play as Spider-Man if you were Spider-Man. Like, you yeah, know what right. I mean? Like, they, give you, they give you all the options, like, like alright, you just want to chill and go flipping across the city, you can do that. Yeah, you wanna, and then you just you hold go... square, and boom, you're just doing back flips, front flips, you know? Like, as you're yeah, flying right. in the air. So yeah, yeah, it's it's like I said, it's a mixed bag. There are definitely things they improved on, but there are also things that's like one definitely did better. And the finishers, for whatever reason, I don't know what it is. If it was just me recently playing it, as far as Spider-Man, Venom, um, just like pretty much everybody you get to play, I thought that one did them better in the way of. They're just more brutal. I mean, we talked about it on stream, too. It's like, Spider-Man is not knocking these people out. He's fucking murdering these people. And <laughs> yeah, you get, right. You get to see that in one, which is pretty damn cool. But Yeah. Dude, how sucks. about the Venom the Venom mission, dude, when you're literally just picking people up and snapping their spines? Yeah, that was very, very nostalgic for me. I was like, I was like that is tough. Yeah. Venom was a brutal son of a bitch. It was so sweet. And then 
Connor on stream wasn't even doing the finishers. He was just, uh, just dude, whiffing them off the... Dude, the chucking balcony. people was the funnest shit ever, dude. You just chuck them off, like, three-story buildings. It was awesome. <laughs> so sick, dude. So, no, I enjoyed that. Um, but, yeah. No, I, I'd say the main thing I kind of realized is the swinging just got a lot better in this game. Yeah. Uh... But how did yeah. you guys feel about having to take like uh, civilians to the hospital and stuff? Um, I think it definitely added, uh, you know, it, it made the little side quests longer, but uh, you know, I, I didn't mind it. But at times it's like, all right, I beat the fight and then I'll see the marker on my map and I'm like, oh, did I forget something? And then like, oh, shit. Yeah, I got to take him to the hospital. I forgot, you know, well, and then I, it also makes... like, I didn't know if any of the older games did that. Yeah, they, they do. Explicitly tell you like you got to take this guy to the hospital this game. It was kind of just like wait. Are you forgetting about me? You know, it's like oh shit <laughs> Yeah, right. He's like wait spider-man <laughs> Yeah, right But I think in that sense it also is a more accurate portrayal of what it's what it is to be like spider-man because you're not yeah, just right. doing all the cool shit. It's like you also it's like okay. Well now I feel yeah, you know. yeah um, Which was cool but yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. could definitely be annoying at times especially if you're in the middle of a mission or some shit then that comes up and you're like god damn it okay now i have to do this yeah um yeah i don't know but that, that's just my thought but now yeah. i am very excited to get into this section the cosmetics there's a lot of good All things right. to say and a lot of bad things to say so yeah i gotta i got i i, I kind of want to kick this one off uh so, uh you boys know me. I like my Spider-Man bare bones, the classic red and blue, the classic black, uh, the non-Peter Parker suits like 2099 Scarlet Spider, all sweet. Um, and this is something that's new. The addition of the suit styles was pretty badass. You know? Yeah, 100%. Because like some of them weren't just like inverted colors of the same suit, but they were just different versions of the like the suit. So. Like the black suit, it's the one that I always bring up. The classic black suit not only includes the original design, but the ultimate Spider-Man design with the purple highlights, the red and blue highlights from the 90s show. The 2099 even includes the, the classic black and red design, which is something that comic fans would like find pretty damn awesome because they always get the comics wrong, or the, like, the colors wrong, you know? Uh, the new movie suits, kick-ass. Um, the Amazing 2 suit was, you know, probably the the highlight of the game you know i agree i played as that at least the first half of the game yeah i was about to say you play as that like primarily the whole time pretty much it's fantastic it looks great in the game yeah and the uh the, the toby black suit them bringing just we predicted that back in 2018 when we were like oh if they bring the black suit in they're gonna definitely allow us to do the the toby black suit and they did it and it was it's awesome it was amazing uh, and uh, I don't know. Spider-Man had some great suits, and I feel like Miles just got shafted in that uh, aspect. Yeah, <laughs> I also think it's mainly a point because it's like he doesn't have as much, you know, like compared to Peter over the years. He really kind of did just come out in like 2010, I think it was. It was some year, but. Dude, that's long that's ago like, he in got this dropped. game, they used them as a marketing campaign for Adidas. Yeah, exactly, right. Which is like, like, dude, like I, I get it. Like, okay, every hero needs some new digs. But if you go on the Miles and it says the classic suit and then you go to his advanced suit, it's the same suit, different materials. Like, that's all you need. Yeah, I'm fine with that. That was fine. But then they put him in that jank-ass suit at the end of the fucking game. Yeah, dude, he's, he's literally wearing Ultra Boost, fucking spandex, a Nike Tech, and his mask with the top cut off. Oh, it, dude. It, it's pretty ugly. Like this, the colors are pretty ugly. The colors are bad, but I, more specifically, the uh, cut off of the, the top of the mask. That's just like, dude, come on, like, dude, like I get it. You gave him dreads, but it's like now you're literally telling who Spider-Man is. Yeah, I was exactly. Just gonna say. Exactly. That's the big thing. Is like he would never do that because it totally like you're giving out identity for no reason. Yes. Who are you looking sense. for? Well, Spider-Man had dreads, so now we're going to question everybody that has dreads. And it goes back to to where you can't 
and I can't remember when we talked about this, but it goes back to when you can't change what suit you're going to wear at the end of the game. And that's in, that's a problem in one and two, which I mean, I get yes. to a certain extent for story that that needs to be done. But at the same time, it just, it kind of, I wasn't mad about the anti-venom suit for the end of the game. I'm just saying that was pretty cool. It was cool, but like, it would have been really cool. Like, especially for photo mode is it's just like being able to play them. Like maybe you want to fight him in the black suit or the red suit and then just taking a screenshot, just action shot. would be sick. You know, just like, yeah, in those suits, it'd be cool. Yeah. 100%. I say it makes more sense in Spider-Man two than Spider-Man because in Spider-Man one, it's just like, he just puts on like a suit of armor to go against Doc Ock. It, he didn't really need that. You know? No, yeah. yeah dude, it's like he just grabs, grabs, like, grabs like extra arm parts. Right. Right. Yeah. Which is just, I don't know. Like I said, I, I get it to a certain extent, but at the same time, it's just, it's annoying at the end of the it's day. It's just like an annoying thing. I get like first playthroughs, it's just like, then it makes sense, but then if I'm doing New Game Plus, it's just like, let me play whatever I want. So I would like to ask, I know, Sam, you are not a huge fan of the original... Uh, design suit for the for this game for Spider-Man One. Now, do you have the same feeling for the updated one for Spider-Man Two? You mean the like advanced suit with the white symbol, like the one yeah. on all the posters and stuff? Yes. Um, I personally think, and you, like I said before, I'm a red and blue guy. I just don't see a need to constantly change the color. Like Clark said, I mean, like make a different material or spice it up a little bit, but you know. Totally changing the symbols and putting white on instead. It's just, I don't see a need for it other than making your own version of it. But comparing the advanced suit from the first game to now, it's 10 times better. The colors are way better. The red and blue, you know? Right. No, I, they just I, look I, so I, much I, more washed out in the last game to me, you know? Which was kind of weird. I mean, I don't know why... It took them a game and a half to kind of fix that. But if that even was a fix, or if they were purposely trying to make it look like that. Yeah, right, right. But um, I, I feel like one thing, and you boys would definitely agree, one main thing that they're missing out on this is that comic suit. Comic suit. Yes. And well, dude, if you like the classic symbiote suits. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. yeah dude, that would have been tight. That would have been tight. It would have been crazy. Because the, the one you're talking about, the animated series suit, like, all the effects it has where the red and the blue change while you're, like, moving and shit, those effects, but with, like, a comic book black suit, like, you know, popping out at you, would just been, it would have been crazy. It would have been really cool to have that. Um, but I feel like as far as overall, uh, it's it's really hard to say because you have the black suits in Spider-Man 2, but as far as other options go, I really think that Spider-Man 1 takes the cake, but the black suits, is just... It's hard to beat it. It's hard to beat that. I don't know. I personally think that the black suits, like you said, it's hard to beat it because it totally elevates, you know, the first suits, the first game's, like, costumes, like, entirely because you get, like, five different styles of the black suit and... I think they took all the best suits from the first game and just ported them into this game. You know, you got 2099, the Toby suit, the Scarlet Spider, you got all that shit. And on top of that, they give you all these new styles for the black suit, which is what everybody wanted in the first game, you know? Right. And like we talked about, I forget who said this exactly, but somebody was talking about how, well, you know, if we're going to bring in the black suit, then you need to have a whole game dedicated to that, and which was right. perfect. Yeah. But at the same time, it would have been cool to even have just the Toby black suit in the first game, just yeah, as a yeah. different option. But I get right. well, even the developer of this game said that like if you're gonna use the black suit, like it needs its own, its own thing. You know what I mean? Exactly. But yeah, I don't know. And were there more suits in this game than the first one? With the addition of the suit styles in this game, it, it obviously it's way more suits, but. Um... I think just base suits. I actually don't know. I think the first game might because they added a bunch later on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know about you boys, but they have those extra 10 suits that you get with the add-on, but fuck oh, all man. that noise, dude. They're so bad. And the pre-order bonus, too. I mean, that could be a whole other thing on its own, but pre-order suits <laughs> are terrible. Yes. The, the well, dude, deluxe edition I don't suits. Understand. Like... Like, why did they choose a fucking runway fashionist 
to make Spider-Man suits. Wasn't he from New York? Dude, like, if that's the only reason, like, that's dumb. No disrespect it's to the guy. definitely the only reason, you know? But it's like, dude, like, you're making over, you're making shit over here for, like, runway models and stuff, and, like, you're just gonna put, like, Spider-Man in a scarf? Like, no. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's, that's Acting like it's a totally new thing. Um, yeah, no, I, it was, that was dumb. Yeah, not and, worth the ten extra dollars. And, but the problem is, it's like, maybe if one or two of the suits were cool, I would consider getting it, but they're all ass. Yes, there's not one in there where I'm like, wow, that's cool. And it's like, the only reason I would get it is if I've seen it in something, you know? Like, those were all just original concepts that really don't even look good, you know? Like, I can't see Spidey fighting crime in that, you know? Yeah. yeah, dude, it's like, they rushed it by the designer, and the de designer was like, cool. But it's like, that's not... It's not something Spider-Man would wear. Right, like, if they had gotten any of the suits that are already in the game, and they were just like, okay, these are the, the pre-order bonuses, like, the rainy black suit and shit like that, it's just like, then you get it, you know? Well, dude, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, for the first pre-order bonus, it was like, it was all of Holland's movie suits and stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Well, I think it was the Iron Spider, the Velocity suit, and then the Spider-Punk suit. I think those were the three, like, pre-order suits. <laughs> Yeah, right, and, like, those were all badass. And out of at least one of those, people were bound to be like, oh, yeah, I'm pre-ordering, I'm getting the deluxe, pre-ordering the game. But at the same time, the deluxe in the first game included all the DLC that would come out, all the DLC stories, and so far they haven't announced that there would be one yet. I'm sure there will be, but, you know, who knows. Right, and maybe, and I kind of just thought about this as y'all were talking about it, but... I don't know if their thought process in it was, okay, well, we need to give people a reason to pre-order the first one, but now that the first one did so well, it doesn't really matter what we do for the second one, because they're going to pre-order it anyway. Mm -hmm. Dude, that could be facts. So but I don't know. If that's the facts, yeah. then that's like literally what every other company's doing. Like, let's just take Call of Duty, for example. You pre-order Call of Duty right now, you know what you get? Mm. A zombie ghost skin. Like, right. Yeah, like what like incentive is that? It, it, it's like a hundred. It's like forty extra bucks for that like version of the game to get that skin, you know. And it's yeah. like, and there's people that bought it, like, right? People that bought it weren't even excited for MW3. They just wanted the skin, and it's like, that's. I mean, like, it's pretty evil, but it, it's <laughs> it's a good marketing strategy. But for this game, they didn't like you said. They didn't even fucking bother on the suits. They're just terrible. Yeah. You're right. It's just like, all right, dude, we need you to make something for Spider-Man. He was like, here. And they were like, thanks. <laughs> exactly. It was like, they didn't even look at this shit. Yeah. No, I mean, some of the suits, it just looked like a child made them. And it's like, dude, what are we doing here? And how did right, how right. did this get the green light? And a child could have did better, you know? Honestly. Honestly, you make him watch one Spider-Man movie, he probably could have done a lot better. So it's just... <laughs> right. I don't know. And... I don't want to say that it's out of laziness because I don't want to make that assumption, but it just feels yes. like it, definitely. Yeah. So, I don't know. But I I would say that as far as comparing uh, game one to game two, I'd probably say, other than the non-inclusion of the comic suit, that Spider-Man 2 I, I takes the edge, in my opinion. But. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I agree. I think Spider-Man 2 knocked it out of the park with the cosmetics. Now, the perfect way to uh, to go into this. Now, they might have done good on that. But one thing they did not do too great on, to say the least, was the face face designs. And Sam, I know you're quite passionate about this, so I'll let you I'll let you take over. <laughs> New um, sucks. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Clark took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, good. Yeah, I kind of figured. I. We, me and you had looked at the article the other night, like, describing their whole thought process behind the original change, and it, it just, it doesn't make sense, you know, like, they had it so good, like, the original face, it was so fucking good, and they blew it, you know, they, they literally just took it away from us, because they said, oh yeah, the, the voice doesn't line up with the face, you know, we, we think he looks too, too young, they claimed, and... 
it's just a big marketing thing to me. There, there's hundreds of people out there that think the same thing. Like, they made him look oddly similar to Tom Holland, you know, and it was clearly because at the time he was just coming out as Spider-Man. It was like the 2019, 2020, I think it was 2019 maybe whenever they first released like the new face, like what he's going to look like. And people, first thing people said, that's just a Tom Holland filter, you know? Right, which is really annoying. And, and we talked to, it's like, although the first face had, uh, I don't want to say vibes, it's a fucked word, but uh, although it had similarities to Andrew Garfield, it's like, it, it was its own thing, definitely. It Whereas was its own just thing. Doesn't, it doesn't feel the same. Right, and that's the thing. When we Peter Parker that, looked like, exactly how you expected him to if he was 25. Right, right. And now we had said this, like, if the new face that they've given us now was the face that we had started with, this whole conversation probably wouldn't be happening. But the fact that they went in, completely erased the original face, and they're just forcing this new one down your throat it's just like i'm never gonna forget about the first one because like all the figures all the toys have that face and you know it's just like how do you just forget something like that dude right. literally you know it's just yeah it's just mind-boggling at the end of the day because you had it so good ever nobody complained what why fix something that's not broken right right so, so that was literally annoying. just to make more money it's, yeah, because it, it, they think that, like, oh, it looks like him, more people are going to be willing to pick it up. And it's just like, dude, it was already the highest-selling PlayStation game of all time. I don't think you got to worry about sales, you know? Yeah. And I mean, fuck, with, clearly they didn't with this game because they gave us ten shitty suits and, you know. And a fuck-ass <laughs> DLC suit. <laughs> right. And, you know, uh, pre-order suit. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know what their thought process was in that, but it's not even like they just did it to him. They changed MJ's face. They changed Harry's face. It's just like, for what? Right. And some of them, like we said, uh, I know, Connor, you had said that you prefer the new Harry face compared to the old. Granted, we only had the photograph of Harry in the last game, but. Yeah, no, I definitely do. I think that was an improvement an improvement that they didn't have to make but that they did um i was like okay yeah it definitely looks a, a good bit better yeah and the whole mj face just like uh, i don't i don't know <laughs> it, it's i don't bad. know it's bad well it's it's not only bad because of how they changed her face but it's the mix of the face change between uh, her and Peter because now she and I said it in stream she looks like she's 45 Peter looks like he's 10 it's just that relationship loses its right genuinity in a way the chemistry and yeah. the people that defend it are all just like oh you know you just don't like it because she looks older and I'm like like no that's not the point the point is they made her look worse and then they took Peter's like the face where he already looks like he's 23 in the first game and they made him look like a baby. So it's just like, it's just, it's so strange. I can't look at that and be like, yeah, that's, that's chemistry. I can see the love there. I, I can't, you know? Yeah. And it takes away from the, uh, the story and that. Yeah. It just puts way. the vibe, completely different vibe whenever they're together. Um, I'm trying to think, but we did talk about too, how they consistently for whatever reason i mean uh, of course they don't do it to the person that you're playing as the entire game but the, the villains though i mean they knocked it out of the park yes uh we talked about this like uh like craven looks fucking impeccable norman osborne looks great you know all the villains for some reason look incredible and then they totally 360 the like you know the, the main character, character of the game of, yeah and like his the people he cares about i think miles looks good you know, that's, you know, that didn't yeah, change they, for me. No, they didn't change much about about the face, though. I mean, they changed a little bit about the hair, but I think they kept that They changed that the hair, much, which I wasn't, you know, pissed about, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I didn't think Miles was a bad haircut. I'm not upset. Yeah, I'm not pissed about that. I thought Miles looked great. I It's mainly the whole Peter and MJ thing, and which they're the characters you kind of spend the most time with, so literally... So it just makes no sense that they would even do that. And I can't say I even understand their arguments because it's like they say that the 
face didn't fit the voice, which one is bullshit, or two that it didn't like look right or whatever. But I think it looked fine. I mean, it had you still had people crying at the end of that game. Like it's just I don't know exactly. And now what. I will never have that same emotion because like I'll always just think like that's not his face; it's the other one, or you know, the other way around. It's I don't know. It was a big change, like Toby said, you know. And uh, big change, but you yeah, develop but... that relationship with that original character and then they just completely change it so it's now it's not even like the same person exactly, they might have right. the same voice but it's not the same person yeah so it's just very weird so i definitely will say uh minus points on that which you know it it, it is what it is they're not going to change it back at this point definitely seeing as they already put it in the miles game and then this one but yeah it, and then the remaster of spider-man so it's not going anywhere, but it's still pretty it's, lame. It's, it's just weird, and it's it's not something that totally deters me from liking the game because I mean I'm on it right now. You know, I'm still love yeah. the game to death. It's just one of those things where it's like every time he takes off the mask, I just I'm just like uh, you know I just get like annoyed. I'm like okay. And it's yeah, and like you said, it's, it's, that just petty, hard. You know? it's hard to have that same emotional connection. Right, which I think again is another reason why I kind of prefer the first game's ending because the first game's ending always makes me get a little emotional, and I'm sure this game's ending would too had they, you know, just made MJ and Peter look like a couple. <laughs> yeah, exactly, like a functional, you know, same yeah, you age can couple. Kind of root for, you know. Right. So, Clark, what what are your thoughts on the new uh, face design? You you like it or you not not a fan? Dude, I'm with you, boy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you can't give us a game in 2018, we play it, we play the story at least three, four times, and then you're going to drop something talking about we're going to change it. Like, dude, that can't be done. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it just totally puts off the vibe, you know? Because, dude, like, if, like, I feel like, uh, I don't want to say they, they did Yuri dirty, because, I mean, he's still, he's still the voice. Right. But I, I feel like everybody had, like, hints of themselves. I said the same thing, you know, like, you're definitely like, like a little like The dude like that him. plays Miles looks like Miles, the dude that voices Harry looks like fucking Harry, and now you got fucking Yuri just getting done dirty because they want to give him a new face. Yeah. Which is, yeah, it's just really annoying, and there's, just, like we said, there's no need for it, really. And no That's matter what, what their like, explanations never, are. I never had a problem with the way he looked. In the first game, like I've never yeah. seen anybody, I've never seen anybody start the game whenever he's getting the police call about Fisk in his bed, and they're like, "Why the fuck does he look like that?" Like nobody said yeah, that. Yeah, nobody said that. Everybody was like, "Oh shit!" Like it's time. There weren't ever any complaints, and then as soon as they changed that face, bro, everybody was just shitting I'm all over. You, it's, it's, it's all because of No Way Home. Yeah. As soon as No Way Home was coming out, they were like, "All right." <laughs> I don't even think Far From Home had dropped yet. I think Far From Home might have just came out, or it, it you know... Actually, I think you're right. Far From Home probably did something just Something like out. that. Because I remember they leaked it before the Miles game came out, which was 2020. And they showed everybody what it was, the new face was, and everybody was like, why did they change this? You know, like, there wasn't a single person like, oh, finally, you know, they... They fixed it. There was nothing to fix. That's the yeah, thing. Yeah, it wasn't like they showed the new face. Everybody was like, "Woo, yeah, yeah, right." Like penguins, yeah. Woo. <laughs> but no, it just wasn't like that. So I, yeah. like you said, it doesn't deter me at all from playing the game. It's just uh, unnecessary. Yeah, it's just one of those things that I'll never like. I'll never like get used to. And it's funny because we've had it for more games than we've had the the PS4 face, you know, and the original, right. Dude, right, honestly, it's like, like still, I they, don't they, care they like the first his face, face for is the fucking this Miles game. game. Right. They changed his face for this game. Yeah, and so like remaster. Them, that's like them starting Spider-Man 3 and they're like, "All right, we're going back to the old face design." Right, right. Like why? Which makes no sense either, because say if somebody doesn't get the remaster and they're just playing Spider-Man PS4 or whatever, they're they're still gonna have that, and then they're gonna go on and play Miles Spider-Man 2. It's just gonna be completely different. And it's not even like a sequential story. It's just two different Spider-Man, basically. Yeah, dude, Same you're gonna right. bump into fucking Peter while you and Finn are at the 
science museum, and you're going to be like, who the fuck is that guy hanging out with rock? That's what I said. That's literally <laughs> what I said. Dude, and it tells you, Peter, like, it shows Peter's voice, and it's like... Yeah, the subtitles. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, oh, and it's like, bro, that's Peter? Yeah, right. What did they... Well, look what they did to my boy, you know? <laughs> they massacred my boy. <laughs> <laughs> and they did. And they did. But, um, uh... Yeah, yeah I, I could go on and on about that damn face, but, you know... Bro, I could, like, talk about days for these games. Uh, yeah, yeah so right. did a good-ass job, though. Yeah. And what I think we might have to do uh, eventually, if all the boys kind of finish Spider-Man 1 around the same time, that we can do a quick review of Spider-Man 1, 2, and then just have both of these videos up. Oh, for sure. That would be sick. But it is... I would also... Is, huh? I was going to say, I'd like to do a Miles one, too. I'm not going to lie. I would, too. I just It's hard to have the patience to go from this and then go play Miles and then go play Spider-Man 2. But I'll probably... Dude, I'll probably like, I'm not going to lie to you. I still have to beat the remaster of PlayStation Spider-Man, just no yeah. Spider-Man 1. And, and, like, as we were doing this video, I'm literally restarting Spider-Man 2. Oh, really? Yeah, I hit a new game. I saw some rumors, and I don't know if it's true, but apparently with the DLC drop, they might put in New Game Plus at that point, but it's just, it kind of sucks waiting this long. I think long New this Game... game. New Game Plus it. is supposed to come out in November. I think it's they said the nineteenth or so. It's, I don't it's know. like I'm, you know, late November, early December potentially. So yeah, we'll, we'll I see. I don't know. They haven't said shit about the a DLC yet. Yeah, right. Uh, speaking of DLC, what do what do the boys think? What do, what are we gonna get? I mean, Carnage was obviously teased, so I mean, there's probably it's like ninety five percent happening. It's there, either but... Carnage is gonna be DLC, or else he's gonna be like I don't want to say a side villain, except I feel like he's gonna be like how the Lizard was in this game. Like you're gonna have to fight him in Spider Man Three like that. They don't make him DLC. Yeah, yeah. I it's tough. I mean, I definitely think because you had. And I'm pretty sure with 1, 2, and 3, all, all three DLCs in Spider-Man 1, that it was like all Hammerhead story, so it kind of connected. But it would definitely be cool to see if we get other villains in that in that DLC. Dude, but that we'll could see. be true. You could definitely have, like, uh, like how they did, like you said, the city never sleeps. Just have, like, part 1, Carnage is just tearing up the city, but you don't know who the fuck it is. Part two, you're tracking them down. Part three, you take them out. Now, I, they definitely won't do this, but what would be a really sick idea is if they brought Venom back somehow for the DLC, and then you were able to play as Venom for the DLC. I, they wouldn't do it, but I feel like that would just be a perfect way to well, dude, uh, this is all get I'm saying. use out of them. They, they showed the whole hive mind idea through the meteorite in Spider-Man 2. So there could definitely be another black black symbiote that could take hold of somebody and still be Venom. But I that don't know if is, yeah, that is also what I thought too. Like, cause uh, the whole Carnage DLC, Cletus Cassidy says, um, you know, Oscorp uh, sent off a bunch of this shit whenever Devil's Breath got out. You know, they broke up the symbiote. They didn't want it to be found. You know, in one spot. So. That's when he found Carnage, so they could bring Venom back, technically, but it wouldn't be, like, the main symbiote that latched onto Peter, you know? Yeah, right, like, so... you definitely wouldn't get Black Suit. Dude, there could be a whole certain part of Venom that latches onto Eddie if they wanted to, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. they definitely have the time to set that up, and, I mean, your DLC is still probably going to be a good... Uh, maybe not nine hours, but good, like, six, four hours. So, I mean, that's double, if not more, the time that a movie could do Eddie Brock justice. So, I mean, they definitely have the time. It's just a well, matter dude, if of they're are talking they going to do it. If they're talking about doing a Venom game, you know what I'm saying? Who's going to be Venom? You know what I mean? Yeah, but, so, you know, it's, 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 uh, are they going to go the villainous route again, or are they going to go the anti- Which, if they go the anti-hero route, I'm going to be a little pissed off, you know, because- well, all I'm gonna I, say I is, see my if, boy Eddie is a bad guy. If you play as Venom in this game, and you enjoy it, and then you want to dumb that down so he's not eating people, like I don't think you deserve a Venom game. You get, you get my point. 
No, yeah. yeah, for sure. But I don't want him like fighting criminals and you know fighting for well, the greater right. good. I mean, I, I want him. Guy. I want him fighting criminals, but I want him eating those bastards. You know what I mean? Like he he should be going after Spider Man and anybody that gets in his way. Exactly, precisely. And the the whole change of heart happens whenever he faces with Carnage, because that's when he realizes, like, I'm not that. You know, like, it's like looking in a mirror, and that's the realization for Venom, is where he's like, oh shit, that's what I'm like. I need to fight against it. And that's Venom's whole arc, but since they kind of already set him up for Harry, it's just, I don't know. That's what I mean, like, you're just gonna have... Venom just attach himself to Eddie and then still be like, welcome back type shit? Like, no. Yeah. Yeah, I, it, it's tough. Because I really, and maybe it's just the denial in me. It's like, okay, they're eventually going to put Eddie Brock in, but they just might never. Yeah, I am banking on them probably never. Which is I just feel like, sad. I feel like the third game is mostly going to focus on... Uh, Norman's Green Goblin and whoever Craven didn't fucking murder. <laughs> like, yeah, well, the chameleon also is probably going to come back. That's another oh, thing yeah, they, we didn't they talk about. They talked about the chameleon. They talked about Silk. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we have people yeah, to fight. Yeah, Silk is coming in. And they can even give characters like that their own game. Like, I can see them doing a Miles 2 or a Silk game, you know, but... Oh, dude, I wouldn't... This, this is what I was telling Connor whenever he came over earlier. Like... I wouldn't be upset with a Miles 2, just as long as it's not around, like, all right, you're going to take out rocks on in the Tinkerer. Like, I yeah, some, it would be I, something along those lines. I think it would also introduce Silk more as a character, you know? I just want, I just want like, a more important villain. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I want it to be a personal villain with Miles, maybe, but, you know, but, like, that's what the Tinkerer was. But Tinkerer was such a letdown. Like, the Prowler was such a great... So well Dude, written in the saying. first Miles game, and they gave the spotlight to the Tinkerer, and it was just not right. Dude, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I understand, like, the Prowler wasn't, like, the main villain because he Miles made him turn good, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, he was also already, like, kind of established as the Prowler, so it wasn't, like, right. a huge revelation. Like, I, would, I wouldn't be upset because, like, like, we all talked about, we haven't seen Rhino... Besides the Martin Lee mission, whenever, like, you see his ghost. Yeah. So, maybe they killed him off screen, but if they did, that's kind of weak. Well, you also gotta think, they also have not brought up, and I know me and Connor talked about this, uh, we haven't heard from Kingpin since Spider-Man 1, you know? Dude, true, but swinging around Spider-Man 2, I will say this. Do you remember the first construction mission? Yes, yes. Dude, the tower's finished. Right. So he's definitely still around. He's around for sure, but, you know, like, he hasn't made a... He didn't make an appearance at all in this game, which is surprising. Did we talk to him in Miles? No. I was wondering if Miles called him while he was nope, in jail. He, yeah, he wasn't in uh, Miles at all. Well, dude, they also established the hands. Like, there's a little secret to, like, where you can find the hands hideout. Right. So m maybe, maybe we see... Daredevil or something? Daredevil. Well, that's another uh, little Easter egg in this game. Is that I think the developers did it on purpose. If you go to where Nelson and Murdoch, the law firm is, they got you evicted. won't. They, yes. So, and it wasn't like a thing where they just forgot to put their names on the plaque. Like, they got evicted. So, those characters exist. They're just not in that building. You're right. So, okay. I feel like... I, I just want to say this. If they do do something with Daredevil, I would want Insomniac to do, like, a Daredevil game. Like, how they're doing Wolverine. Yeah. But, like, seeing him, like, how, um... Like, if you're, like, randomly fighting, let's just say, in Hell's Kitchen. And, like, you know how, like, Miles would just randomly pop up in some of your fights? Yeah. I, I would be cool if they did that with, like, Daredevil and Spider-Man 3. Yeah, that but, would be cool. Other than that, like, I want... A daredevil game if you're gonna bring up daredevil for sure but yeah then again like how how would you do daredevil because like you know he's blind true i mean i'm sure they, they'd find ways around it i i do well, think they'd also though, just let the player see <laughs> dude the whole screen is just <laughs> black you just have to rely on noise and shit yeah that'd be funny as shit well i think another thing too though is i mean they open the book with black cat that you can go into you know other dimensions kind of like 
Doctor Strange. So I don't know if they're going to bring him in briefly for Spider-Man Yeah, dude, 3. Wong leaves you a note and says me and the Doctor owe you one. So you never know. I mean, he could show up. And like you said, I don't think that if they will show up, they're going to be an uber-prominent role, either I mean, uh, yeah, Daredevil that's or the... Strange. But, right. Yeah. That is the most annoying part with the like the Marvel movies today. And, and Pops, like my dad back then, Marvel team-ups were a huge thing in comics where a superhero would team up with another, and it would be like an annual thing, like a yearly thing. Like, oh, I want to see Spidey team up with so-and-so. And you'd have to wait a year to see something like that. And it was pretty awesome when it would happen. But the movies today, that's all it is, is it's just like – Characters popping in and out of each other, you know, helping out, and it's it's annoying. And if this game decided, if these games decide to do that, they they should do it very briefly, like Clark said, like, oh, Spidey just showed up in the middle of a Daredevil fight, and you know they're mixing it up together. Like that's cool, but you know they shouldn't be constantly attached to the hip, you know. Well, dude, yeah. it's like how they said that uh, the Wolverine game is going to take place in the spider-man universe like the only hint you get to wolverine is legit in this game with miles suit yeah that's that's it and i think that's like, other it's not, because i mean avengers towers in this game you know it's just like they're not flying around anywhere right like like you don't see iron man flying around you don't see hulk fucking shit up in the city which like, what I, like. I what i literally want it's like, all right, like we're in New York and Logan's like off in another state. And like you see the news and like you hear something about Spider Man. But like other than that, it like I don't, want, like, him, I don't right. want him in New York City type shit. Yeah. No, for sure. Right. And it would be like really cool. I know they'd never do this because licensing, whatever. But it would be cool to see occasionally if you were like out and about swinging or if you're playing as Strange or Daredevil, you see them like around the map maybe sometimes, but they're not heavy involved with the story that you're. Yes. Yeah, so or you can like go hang. You can go see Daredevil on a rooftop or, you know, even DLC. Like I would love to see a, a Spider-Man Daredevil team up against Kingpin if they decided to bring it back. That'd be awesome. You know? Yeah, the dude exactly. I think that might be what they're aiming for cuz fucking they're off the building. You haven't heard from Fisk. Who's taking care of Fisk? Like, you know what I mean? Daredevil, he's Yeah, right, right. But like, you know, that's just that's just me hoping. Yeah. And the thing is too, it's like they with these games is the bar has already been set so high with the first one that I mean there are bound to be people disappointed with what they do in the second. Like no matter how good you make the game, I feel like that's it carries on with everything that they do in the future. Right, and I think that's why we were so critical on this game. Uh, like at some points, because it was like, you know, it's just like coming off of the first game. It's like how could you top that? And they did in a lot of aspects. And then there's obviously somewhere it's like. You're waiting five years for a game to come out, and you obviously just want it to be perfect, and it, you know, obviously it won't be, so there's always that little disappointment there, you know? Well, dude, yeah. it's like the fact of, like, you can't please everybody, but oh, what, for I sure. like, what I like is that they tried to please the general audience, like, the people that were, like, true fans of Spider-Man, like, we got to fight Sandman, we got to fight the Lizard, like, we got to fight most of his villains, and what I think the first one missed is like, yes, he's older. He's already taken care of those guys. But it's like, I still want to see him. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that's, that's, uh, yeah. But, which that's is definitely how, something they derived from the Arkham games, you know? Yeah, but I feel like that's why I like the second one more. Because, yeah, we fought the Shocker and, yeah, we fought the Sinister Six. But it's like, those weren't who I was aiming to see. Like, you mean, like, the villains you really wanted to see were in this game? Like, don't get me wrong. I wanted to fight Doc Ock. Doc Ock was sweet. Scorpion was sweet. Rhino was dope. But, like, I definitely wanted to lay out fucking Venom, fucking Lizard, Green Goblin. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but then it's like, those are the movies I grew up with. The first, fucking Toby, he's fighting Green Goblin. The third one, he's fighting well, Venom. Well, yeah, right. But it's like, the thing is, too, and it's like, it's really cool to fight those characters. But for me, it's more along the lines of, like, how well they're told. And, like, is the fight the really worth, you know, like, is the anticipation there? Like, they look great and the fight is cool, but is the emotional... Like, I don't know, that's what that's the thing with the Doc Ock fight, because, like, the Doc Ock fight throughout the whole thing, you're just like, fuck, I don't want to do this, you know? Yeah, because you, you have that 
all that time of just being Peter and Dr. Octavius, they were they're like best friends in that game, and then he, he turns on you. He's like his mentor. Which I so. think is even, yeah, it's better, it's better told in the first game with Doc Ock and Peter being friends than, you know, Harry and Peter being friends. I don't know, because I feel like when Harry shows up, they kind of get straight to business, you know? Yeah, and I well, think dude, it's more... I feel like... I feel like that's how they wanted to write it. Like, they wanted you to have that emotional impact with, you're going to have to beat the fuck out of the dude that showed you the way. Where this one, it's, all right, you finally get your friend back after, remember he said he was, like, going on a trip? He was in Europe, Out of yeah. states. And then, like, you find out that he's dying while sneaking around his apartment. So then you finally get to see him. You get to hang out. And, like, he, he's been in a tank for all those years, but we don't know that. So, like, he definitely wants to not fucking waste any time because he doesn't know how much time he has left. Yeah. But then for Peter, that's also stressful because now you got to deal with all this shit on top of getting your friend back where, who you want to hang out with. But then, like, you know, you got your own life that you've been dealing with since he's been gone. Right, and I, I think for me it's, like... Although they did do the relationship between Harry and Peter really well, I just think as far as relatability, you can relate so much to maybe somebody in the first game, somebody in your life that you were that close to, and then they completely change up to where it's like, in this one, the Spider-Man 2, it just seems very forced. But, I mean, that's that's how the story is. But just in that it's a, Yeah, it's, it's also just a bit more predictable, you know. I mean, like we all knew that Doc Ock was going to be Doc Ock. But it was one of those things where it's kind of like, we were like, maybe he's not going to turn into Doc Ock. And then he does, and you're like, fuck, you know? Yeah. Well, dude, like, that's how I was feeling for this game. Like, it was like, I was thinking, like, all right, Harry's Venom. The symbiote's going to come off of him at some point to get the black suit because of how we saw the trailer. I was like, Harry's just going to die whenever we have the symbiote, and that's going to piss off Norman. And I was thinking that they were going to give the symbiote to Eddie, but seeing how they did it, where it's like, all right, he gets to play Agent Venom, kick all this ass, and then he sees Peter get stabbed, and he's like, I got to save him. Well, it's not even like Harry decided to do that. It was like the the symbiote did, so he straight up saves them. Yeah. But then once he saves them, it's times on the essence, because now what was healing you is fucking gone. Destroying you, yeah. So, I kind of dug that, because it was like, alright, you go do this mission with the black suit, you go do this mission with the black suit, and then, like, slowly, as we know through the movies and shit, Venom is getting hungry. And slowly, and slowly, Peter starts to get all pissed off, but then we're thinking, like, yo, we gotta get this suit back onto fucking Harry, because he's gonna die. But then we don't want to give it back, because we like seeing Peter in the black suit, so it's like... Yeah. Like, there's there's a lot of deterrence that we have to go through. I like that in the game, too. Um, the, 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 like, the new Tom Hardy Venom movies really focus on the fact that Venom needs to eat food. But, like, not really. <laughs> like, it's not always begging to eat people. And this game I like. Like, it really just wants to fuck shit up. That's all it wants to do, you know? Yeah, dude, it's not like, like we need to fucking eat everybody in sight. And whenever it's on Harry, it's not like, all right, let's go eat these motherfuckers. It's like, let's change the world. Like, that's what the goal is. It's not, I need brains, you know? Well, dude, I like the scene whenever uh, he comes home in the black suit. He's like, I'm, I'm really tired. And the symbiote, like, tucks him into bed, and he's sleeping. MJ hears like a door slam and she's like what was that she checks outside sees the mercenaries and she goes to go tell him like yo you gotta get and he's already gone yeah well the, well, Peter's asleep the suit is what's you know it's like using him as a puppet you know yeah the suit's like we gotta go <laughs> which was great and that was another thing that was really cool about this too was I mean you see it in the movies but not as heavily because they don't have the time to do it but you get to see a lot of the inner monologue and how the symbiote literally goes from being like oh my god this is amazing and it's like my friend in a way to now it's like okay it's destroying everything in my life 
but through yeah. that inner monologue dude, like, between you see Peter, Peter, he's like, dude, this is awesome. And then when Doc Connors was like, we got to get that off you because it's like literally fucking with your mental state. The symbiote throws his phone away. He's like, you just told me, Doc. You chose me. You know? helped me be a better yeah. Spider-Man. Like, no, it doesn't. Right. And, yeah, it's just, it's tough. Uh, but... I don't know. I, th- I they they do definitely do the symbiote right. It's just there's yeah. I think they that... did it right in a lot of good ways in the sense of like it's not two different people. Like the symbiote is is not like whenever it's talking to Peter. Like you never hear Peter go, "What? Who said that?" You know, it's like he just kind of goes with it. Like that's just how it works, and you know that's sweet to me. Yeah. Well, dude, like. I, I like how they use it as like the uh, like y- your subconscious. Like he's right. swinging over, he's like he better not have touched Miles. Like you know what I mean? And he's like if he yeah, touched right. Miles, I don't know what I'd. And he's like, you creep. Yeah, right. Like the symbiote <laughs> doesn't necessarily give a shit about any of these fucking people. It's just like it knows that Peter cares about these people, so it's gonna like remind him like, oh shit. You know, like, I can't let anything happen to him, you know, and it's just trying to seduce him into feeding into his dark side, you know? Right. And what I like is, like, they don't let Peter get the satisfaction of the kill. They let Venom get the kill. Yeah, because Venom really wants to do it. Yeah, he's like, he's a dick. <laughs> like, you know yeah. what I mean? So, and that's, I, I mean, the symbiote's another thing that we could talk about for literally days. Uh, what right. I, what I really wanted to ask y'all, and if you have three things, that's cool, but I'm at a bare minimum, I'll ask for one. What do y'all think is one thing that this game did better than the first, and then one thing that this game did not? Bro, I can Whoever give you three. Take it. Hey, Clark, take it. All right. The first thing, swinging is definitely, like you said, it feels more smoothly. Now, your belief, part two, is the web wings. I'm digging the web wings. <laughs> I love that. I, I don't know what it is. I'm like, I, I've i never seen them in comics and shit. Like, you know, I know Sam has. But just to me, the web wings were a dope addition. Yeah. And for part three, I'm going to have to say that... uh Everything that, like, failed to go up to expectations in the first one was definitely met in this one. Like, in terms of story and gameplay-wise. Yeah. Because they definitely did, they definitely fucking drove the line, like, I think it's in the first game, when you're playing as MJ, you sneak into Osborne's fucking secret office where the symbiote is. And then, in Miles, they keep showing you how the symbiote's affecting and how it has, like, motion outside of that. And then this game, they fucking bring it. Yeah. So the storytelling is definitely fucking obsolete. Uh, all definitely fair. Yeah, it definitely uh, expands on the first two games. Now, as far as things that this game either could have done better or did not as good as the first game what what are your opinions on that um this is like kind of from another gaming standpoint like in assassin's creed they have like a locking mechanism whenever you're fighting somebody like hand-to-hand combat i wish that like you could click r3 or something to lock Mm -hmm. onto somebody for when you're doing like the web zips and zip like and shit away so like the camera never Really pans? Which well, that, is actually dude. funny, because they actually do that in a lot of the other, like, older Spider-Man games, you know? Well, and right, it's surprising it's like, that they didn't bring that into, the, into these Insomniac Spider-Man games, you know? But then I also like what they did, it's like, um, in the Kraven fight, right? Like, you know when he gets the sniper? Alright. You could totally just swing around all those trees and not know where the fuck he is and dodge it for the whole time. But I really wish, like I said, you could just lock on, swing around, and see where he's at. So, like, you know, you could be ready for the next attack. Yeah. I the other that's two... Where... 
other two, uh, it's kind of hard. Like, um, I'm going to say that I'm glad that, like, you don't have to do 15 different crimes in each district. But I'm kind of upset that, like, the crimes can kind of be brushed over. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I don't really have to go do those. Yeah, yeah true. Like, the Platinum was definitely a little... Honestly, a little too easy compared to the... Granted, the first one was too easy. I got easy, the Platinum but, my first playthrough. Yeah, well, but it's like... The first one was definitely a little bit more time-consuming in my mind that, compared to this one. I feel like the story takes way longer to beat compared to actually doing all the side quests. Like, we, bought, we banged them out in a day, you know? Not even. Well, dude, I feel like... I feel like that's also how they write it. Like, you know what I mean? Like... The first one, like, you kind of get kind of bored. Like, oh, I have to find 50 fucking backpacks. Right. Like, you know what I mean? I have to go bounce around between all these different side missions that have, like, three, four diff different parts. True, but the, the, the backpacks in the first game were pretty neat, where it wasn't just, like, a collectible. It was, like, whenever you collect a backpack, you also get a little, like, a, like a story Momentum. behind something that was in the backpack. And it was just cool, and... Oh, facts. I totally agree with you. But it's also, like, the fact of, like, like, you know, just going for platinum-wise, I'm saying. That was definitely, like, you know, I get it. Yeah. But why? Right. Like, he's over here. He's already graduated college. He fucking lost his job at the Bugle. Why does he care about his own high school backpacks? But then, I guess same could be said for the spider bots. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I will say, I, I will say just to go off that real quick that the, in my opinion, the backpacks were more fun to do than the spider bots. I thought the spider bots were a pain in the ass. Uh, they That's were a little cool. annoying, and they didn't really have much to it other than like Peter would say something snarky or Miles would about like what it looked like. It wasn't like there was a story that he could say like, you know, I don't uh, know. The story for spider bots was literally setting up to how. PS4 Spider-Man got yanked into across the Spider-Verse. Yeah. Which I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna diss, cause like I enjoyed seeing him into the Spider-Verse movie. But it just seemed a little unnecessary, I guess. In that a little, way. a little forced. That's right. what I'm saying. You know, like it, like it's not like really over there. time together. It's not like he's rushing over to Yankee's house to see if he's fucking playing in his dorm room. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> it's like, okay. Uh, was that all three? Yeah, dude, I'm gonna say that's my all three. Alright. Uh, well, I, I th like I said, I think those are all fair. Definitely all valid. Um, Sam, it's got different answers? Um, there? I wouldn't say, like, I don't know, I wouldn't go, like, three and three. I feel like... All of Clark's answers uh, kind of correlate within, like, one category for me. You know, like, but, like, the things that I would say the game did right is, personally, I would say gameplay-wise. Obviously, it's just the superior game in that sense, you know. And, like, with swinging, uh, combat, you know, the, the suits you can wear, all that shit. You can play as Peter or Miles, depending on how you're feeling, you know what I mean? And the one thing that they gotta add though is definitely the the whole changing the weather and changing the time of day thing, because that's just gonna be cool. But I, I just I'd say gameplay was definitely the thing that this game shined in the most. Like if you're looking for the more fun game to play, this is probably it. You know. Just to follow up on what Sam said, I also have to respect how they gave Miles and Peter their own respective side missions. Yeah. Right. Right. That was definitely cool. There you go. But, but um, think... oh, sorry, as you were saying. Uh, kind of, I uh, just forgot what I was going to say. Basically, like, I, it was cool to see them fight together. I wish there were, I don't know if I wish there were more or less fights with them together, because like you said, it's like, it's cool to have team-ups from time to time, but I feel like there were a lot of uses to where it's like, okay, we're using the both of them, but I can't switch to Miles, so that's annoying. And then I can't switch to Peter if I'm Miles, mm -hmm. and that's annoying. So it yeah. was cool to see, but I just think in moderation, maybe. But, like you were saying, been, yeah, could have been done a little, a little better, you know. Right, but but overall, like I said, I think gameplay is probably the biggest plus side of this for me. Like now, for negatives, I wouldn't say it's like a super negative because I also love this game, but I know I know you agree. Uh, story-wise, 
I prefer the, if I'm looking to play a, a Spider-Man game for the story and if I want to get emotional and like really invested into it, I'm going to play the first one. And I know that Clark said the first one makes you more of a detective Spidey, which, you know, it, it happens, you know, like you know, Spidey definitely has the moments where he's got to figure out what the hell is going on. And it, it's not going to be right away. The problem shows itself, but I get more invested in Spider-Man one story than I do in Spider-Man two. But it's like, here's the thing is like, if I'm going to want to play a spider, if I'm going to want to hop onto any of the games to swing around to bullshit, to kill some time, I'm going to hop on this one. But if I'm going to hop on one of the Spider-Man games that I know I'm going to be like super invested in the whole time, like and I'm not going to want to stop. It's probably going to be the first one, you know? Yeah, I, I, I perfectly said. Um, but yeah, that that that's that might be it for me, you know. All right, yeah, and, and it's hard too because I feel like Clark covered a lot of that, which was basically oh, for sure, was for sure. Say too, you know, all accurate. Uh, I would say probably the best addition for me would be, and we talked about it already, but it's the suit, like changes that you can do to the suit. Uh, I forget what they're called specifically, like mods or whatever. Oh uh, yeah, the suit styles and stuff yeah. is really cool. That was that was a really great addition that I didn't even think about them doing for the first game. It didn't even like cross my mind that that would be something. Okay, yeah, that'd be cool if they did. But then they add it into this that nobody really even asked for, and it's like okay, they kind of knocked it out of the park with that. Yeah, it's something that like people didn't know they needed, but then when we have it now, it's like damn, you know, like this is pretty essential, and like we didn't even think of it, you know. Right, and then to go off that on the opposing side, it's like, okay, you're going to have that, but as soon as the game gets released, you're not going to have New Game Plus. I mean, that's just stuff like that, you know, it doesn't, doesn't make too much or, sense. Or, yeah, to you're, you're not going to have the weather change or the time of day, you know. Yeah, it's just very simple stuff Post that game. should be in the base game as soon as you buy it, and it's just not. Yeah. It's like, okay. And you know they're going to add it, but it's just like, it's just lame because, I mean, people, we, we platinum the game, all three of us, within a week. I mean, me and Clark within like two, three days of the game dropping, so. Yeah, literally. It's, it just sucks because then it's like, well, what do we do now? <laughs> you know? And in part, that's our fault, but they definitely should have known that people are going to be grinding this game. When it comes. We've been waiting for five years, you know, so if they added New Game Plus and just more shit to do, like in terms of like photo mode by changing the weather, that would Definitely something that they should have added right off the bat instead of later. For sure, for sure. And and it's tough because I wouldn't say that there's... It, you can definitely point out to certain things what one did better than the other, but they just are both kind of uh, equal in, in a sense of... Not that they're the same game, because I you, you see a lot of people say that, especially in like comments on like Instagram and shit. I see people all the time being like, uh, it's the same exact game as the the first one. You're paying $70 for something that's the same exact thing. It's like, that's not true. So there are definitely things about uh, each respective game that are either better or worse, but... Um, you're right. You know. You're definitely getting what you paid for, for, for all of them. Yeah, 100%. And, and I think we both, or all three of us know that neither of these games are bad in any sense you know, no either, no way they're there all are gonna great be things yeah. that you dislike but it doesn't make it bad whatsoever definitely one of the best spider-man games of all time right for yes sure. yeah um so yeah i mean now i this is the main question this is what's gonna end us off here but and whoever wants to take the reins go for it but spider-man one or spider-man two and why I, I I honestly can't even say, because like I said, it's just like with my points, it's just I don't know. One does one better than the other, and then another does the other better than another. You know, dude, that's what I'm saying. Like I like feel I said, like like I'm gonna both. hop on two to if I want to just swing around and play. It's gonna probably be two now, especially after going back to Spider-Man one. It's like wow, it's like night and day. Yeah. But I feel like if you had to choose one, fuck. if I were to pl if I were to play another game until the fucking next one were to come out, I'm going too, dude. Like, R.I.P. Mr. Octavius, but like, 
I'll be seeing you in the third one. Facts. Yeah, the third one might be the, the that would probably be the be all end all because depending Dude, I'm on how telling they you, do the it's Green the, Goblin. The third one is literally just Doc Ock and fucking Green Goblin, which I'm banking on it will be. Uh, I think that's going to be it, no question. That'll probably be the any any one with the Green Goblin is going to be the one that I'm going to be the most like critical on because you're right because it's like if they fucking knock the Green Goblin out of the park and it's Norman Osborn, like it's. It's probably going to be my favorite one, you know? Yeah. Dude, that's what I'm saying. So it's, but, it's definitely a tough call. Yeah, Carter, what, what, what do you think before I get Because I'm really debating on it right now. Ah, uh, fuck. And it, it's one of those things where uh, and we talk about, you know, whenever you rank... Uh, sorry to bring it to fucking Friday, but if you, if you rank your Friday movies, it's going to change on, like, a kind of day-to-day yeah. basis even and it, i feel like very similar with this because i could i really like spider-man 2 just because i just played it but at the same time i've played spider-man 1 10 you know eight times whatever exactly so like, and mm-hmm. so it, it really could change on a dime but i think if i had to pinpoint it to one or the other i'm going to spider-man 1 that's just me that's just me i think um, and respectively, in its current state, I think Spider-Man 1 is better. Stolen Man, because... Man, some hoes, bro. It, 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 well, it's just like, you gotta think about it, too. It also has a... Three DLC story packs. You know, they've perfected the game. This game, game isn't done! It's not Exactly, that's the thing. That's why it's tough, because it's like, this game is... I'm hoping it's far from over, and at the same time, we've also only played this game once compared to the, like, handful of times all three of us have played Spider-Man 1, you know? Yeah. That's fact, actually. I think we've played Spider-Man 1 on every single difficulty. (laughs) Right, so we know that game like the back of our hand, and this game, we're definitely forgetting so much stuff to talk about because we've only played it one time, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. And it's like movies. You gotta watch a movie twice to really get it. But like Connor said, these these rankings change just like all the time. So we'll we'll definitely see. But you know, uh, and I also like how we literally didn't even include Miles as a game in itself. Well, dude, well, like no disrespect to Miles, except like I feel like the Miles game was supposed to be part of like the DLC pack. Again, like, yeah, and it's like Spider-Man One. I feel like it also it just <laughs> when I think of Spider-Man One, I also include Miles in that like thing, you know, because it's that's essentially what I'm saying, like a it's, DLC it's literally Spider-Man like 1. a couple months within a like a, a part. Right. Yeah, and and that's another one too. If the boys are down, you know, I will replay Miles in the midst of finishing Spider-Man One, starting Spider-Man Two. But we could do a, a whole nother. Uh, Kind of like mini pod on Miles, which I'd love to do. So there's Definitely plenty of down. plenty of time yeah, to talk a, about both games. We could do a right. mini pod for each of the games if we wanted. Which yeah, I'd we can do one. For. We can do Miles. You know, and I think all of us would need to. I think like even though we're all replaying one right now, I think that we could all like confidently do a thing for Miles. You know. Or yeah. for uh, the first game, because we know it so well, but I think Miles is one where it's like we'd have to replay it, you know, to really have a talk, you know. Definitely. Um, so, I mean, I'm thinking, I don't know how much longer it's going to take y'all to beat Spider-Man 1. It might take me a little bit, so I mean, maybe like a week. But I'd soon, man, I'd be down to do another one of these, because this is fun as fuck. Yo, how far are you on the, the first Spider-Man? Because me and Sam are replaying it. Yeah, I'm. I knew I was probably about four missions behind Sam, uh, but I think he's gotten a bit farther than me now. So I mean, I. Well, he passed up me like today. Okay, so yeah, I'm definitely so, like, a good I, bit I'm behind you. I'm not the you. part. I'm not the part where uh, you and MJ talk to Morgan. Mo- not Morgan Michaels. You're trying to find Morgan Michaels. Yeah. And you uh, accidentally knock out Charles Standish in uh, the Sable facility and say sorry, Charlie. Oh, yeah. That was okay. literally the last mission I did before we started this podcast. Right. Uh, I think the last one I did was... 
so I mean I'm still pretty damn early on but it's whenever MJ is in the museum and then she's with that one chick and then she leaves and she finds out all this shit about Devil's Breath so I mean I still have a good bit to go but I feel like yeah, this weekend potentially yeah. you're close you're cover close, some bro. ground right. yeah I think within the next like you know two days I'll probably be done with the game because I'm on the Mr. Negative boss fight in the subway so I feel like I right can get that, the Mr. The Negative in like literally 20 minutes <laughs> Right. Yeah. So I mean, hey, uh, I'd say within the week we'll have uh, another one of these up for sure. But I fucking so enjoyed having the boys on for this. I mean, this is fun as fuck. It was a great talk. It would definitely got a lot out there. So, viewers, uh, I know I saw there was one person in here. I don't. I mean, I don't know if it was one of the boys, but it said two people. So I assume it was maybe one of the boys and then somebody else. But if there is anybody uh, else still listening up in here, then uh, I haven't joined shit. <laughs> Then maybe we just have two random motherfuckers up in here, which would be hype, but... Uh, Ooh, what's up, G? Yeah, what's up, G? What's up, Holmes? But what's up? Uh, whoever's watching this, then definitely stay tuned for another one of these, because it'll be coming up soon. But hope you all enjoyed. Bro, I'm literally fighting Sandman right now. Fuck. <laughs> what the what fuck? Up, Marco? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <sighs> well, thank you all for joining. It was a fucking blast. Uh, peace out, y'all. Shit. Shit.